Already opened and inserted the creamer packages. Going with the OC mug today. Have to be a little more gentle with this machinery, especially in this time. Wouldn't want it to wouldn't want it to break. If that were to happen, it would not be good times. And although, really don't need to stir by putting the creamer in first. I have my Tropical Hideaway spork. It's a spoon and a fork combined. You can see little grooves right there on the top. I'm going to use that to mix it up a bit, eh? Normally the piranha would be under the liquid, but not in this case. Just perched above it there. The piranha don't like caffeine. Whirlpool! You dizzy piranha? Wearing the appropriate t-shirt. For today's subject matter, welcome everyone. Adam, the woo here, Back to the Future, it is my all-time favorite movie, mostly for nostalgia reasons. 1985, I was 11 years old, and when I first saw it, I thought, what in the heck is this beautiful piece of filmmaking? Over the years, I have collected quite an accumulation of items, paraphernalia, a mishmash, a plethora of things pertaining to that series, that trilogy, if you will. And I would like to show them to you. Some of them are on display, some of them are in boxes, some of them are tucked away in the nooks and crannies of my homestead. I'm going to dig them out. And you can feast your eyes upon them. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? The magic number today is 12... Two days ago when I started, did 10 push-ups. Then yesterday, did 11. Going for a dozen right now. I'm pretty sore. I don't really feel like doing these, I have to be honest, but gotta be done. One, two, three, four, five, six. So sore from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve. I know my form has a lot to be desired. I am not an expert at fitness at all, as I've been stating. Two sets of 12. Oh, that's it for now. That's it. And now on to my Back to the Future stuff. Here on the bottom shelves there are some records, books, other knickknacks pertaining to this. But we're going to start off with the top shelf. The most obvious are the two different size DeLoreans larger one there on the left and the smaller time machine on the right with the conducting hook going directly into the flux capacitor and there's doc brown hanging out up there too reading the bottom of this one diamond select and universal put this out in 2012 i got the wing doors open you can look down inside 
It's got all the bells and whistles. This one still has the production date sticker on it. 725-2014. 124 scale, which is a little smaller than its counterpart. Here's a photograph from a very cool event I attended up in Northern California over a year ago for part three. They were taking pictures against the the western backdrop clock. I brought my own ensemble. Bought a cowboy hat and appropriate garb. And when it comes to rarities, I have not seen many of these snow globes floating around. I got this, gosh, over two decades ago at Universal Florida. I was always interested to note that the clock on the front it's just a random time, nothing from the films. Stated here, 98 is when it was produced and the barcode there kind of torn off. The parts of it still remain. And all the glitter floating down. This thing is so awesome. And tough to find. Naturally, you have to be cautious of the 1.21 gigawatts and the clock tower. Well, actually, it's the archway going into Hill Valley 2015. Speed limit is 20 miles per hour max. No hovering. Pretty sweet. Oh, speaking of clock tower, I have to be gentle with this as I turn it around. There you go. There's the courthouse. At that same Northern California event, they had these Frisbee pie plates. The re these were not screen used reproductions. I got one of those. And I met someone once that had the thermos that went with this. I do not have the thermos, but I do have the plastic lunchbox from 89, part two. This Blu-ray set that came out a while back is pretty fantastic. It's full of lots of special features and whatnot. Before I dive into it, show you the contents, make sure you shield your eyes from the light because, well, it's pretty heavy. Let's try it under the shroud of darkness. It's a little bit of an echo in this enclosed room, but here it goes. Come on, where's the button? Inside is a little pamphlet and instruction sheet on how to replace the batteries in the middle section here are all the discs for the animated series. Every episode of that cartoon spinoff on the far left, of course, the trilogy and other bonus features and a pretty awesome visual history booklet as well. This was for the 30th anniversary. That's when that was released. The discs are stored inside these little heavy duty cardboard compartments. You can see them, how they just kind of slide in there. And you can, can notice all the bonus features as well. One thing I really like is the fact that the ride that was at Universal Studios, Florida, Hollywood, and overseas, there is a complete ride through. So you can just sit on the couch and Experience it. Plenty to peruse in the visual history. Facts, figures, photographs. Remove some stuff from the bookshelf there. Place them here for you to see a little bit better. Laser desk, don't be confused, this is not a record. That is a laser disc, kind of a little bit around, or I guess it was around the VHS generation. Laser discs were like a big thing. And then next to that, 
two different vinyls, one without a sleeve, without of the soundtrack, and on this one I have placed, you know, the Pizza Hut, the small Pizza Hut emblem, and the Blast from the Past receipt. There is a big community of other BTTF enjoyers. Jeff Tucker wrote a book called Your Friend in Time. That's him down on the Universal lot when they had the Futuristic Part 2 stuff set up. The hoverboard, which is basically just a little notepad that I've never used. A couple books. I don't know what year this came out, but when I saw it, I found it. I don't know how, but I found it. I just had to pick it up. The official book of the movie trilogy. And I hadn't seen it before. You do see a lot of documentation and articles, books, etc., etc. But this was one I had not I had not really seen. So I grabbed it. My friend Natalie got me this. I don't know, a couple years ago for my birthday. Fourth draft revised on 10-12-1984 with pink revisions on 10-21-1984. And as you can see, there were some changes from this to the final product on the screen. The save the clock tower moment. Marty and Susie? Who the heck is Susie? You know, things progress, things change doesn't always go according to plan. There are alterations. Lady, can't you see I'm busy here? Yeah, that was never said. Pretty interesting stuff, just to flip through and just see. And obviously some stuff remained and made it into the movie. And check this out, George calls into the kitchen, Bertha! How about bringing Marty his French toast? An uninformed maid enters with a tray and sets a lovely plate of French toast in front of Marty. Huh. This record still has the light paper sleeve that it slides into. And date stamp 1985. And a rainbow. This shows just how large and gargantuan those laser discs were. I've placed a regular DVD Blu-ray to the side, show the comparison. And this is not the sequel, it's still the first, even though it has the number two right there on it. It's because there's two sides, you gotta flip it over, just like a record to watch. This unique shirt, which I've never seen its equal, was given to me by my friend Jamie a few months ago, and I'm sporting it for this episode because it just kind of makes sense. I don't know where it came from. I didn't ask any questions, but I definitely embrace it. Not really sure why I haven't put these in a protective case yet, but Tom Wilson, who was very prominent in the films, gave me this from the set, from the Pleasure Paradise, as well as this napkin right here. I treasure these a lot. These are from when the filming was taking place, and he gave me these, these in person, which means a lot to me. Pretty dang cool. The napkin can be seen in part two, when Marty is having his brow wiped off from sweat from waking up from that dream. She's using this to to wipe it off. This is obviously not the one that was used, but it was there that day. And this is not a recreation. These can be seen in the office when Michael J. Fox playing Marty picked one up and put it in his pocket. Gonna dig a little bit deeper now into some boxes that I have in storage there's more. There's lots more. When you show an interest in something, people tend to give you items from that interest. And this is a cell from the animated series 
Thank you for all the videos. Your friend in time, Stephen, from the UK. And Jeff Delgado, amazing artist, did this rendition of the Peabody's. When it comes to pine trees, he owned all of it. A bunch of different versions of Hot Wheels, Johnny Lightning brand, Lego. Someone even gave me the game for the Wii. I do not have that particular video game system. Well, I got distracted for a second from the old fan club pamphlets, brochures, magazines. And I picked this up on that particular date, the USA Today. And I might have all the license plates. Like I said, these are all just in boxes. Don't really need to display them, but want to keep them safe. Wouldn't want them to be erased from existence. Wait, that's, that's the, there we go, erased, here we go. Erased from existence. Browsing through these magazines, which came out in spring of 90, you could order official merchandise. Probably not still available, but you got the watches there, some little stickers. And this drinking mechanism. Pretty, pretty, pretty good stuff. This jacket is great. Look at this sweet skateboard. And a price list. Just check off which one you want and order away. It got shipped to your door. Over in this room found a few more articles stashed away in the closet. You're hearing a fan behind me. This house is full of noises, whether it be the coffee maker, the refrigerator with a mind of its own. In each room I have air circulating through fans. Anyway, back to these. Some I got from the George Barris complex up in Los Angeles. A couple years ago, they were having a garage sale, a big yard sale out front and inside. And there was a lot of DeLorean memorabilia that I had never seen from BTTF, which is short for, you know what. And like this, for example, still has the universal price tag on it here, just under $5 which is something I had also never seen before. And the way it works is, see if I turn it this way. Okay, that didn't work. Let me turn it. There it goes, see? So it shows the statement and then, there it is. Pretty neat. If you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Price tag still on this as well. For ages three and up, made of die cast metal. Only $3.95. Still has the price point. And this keychain. Also still has the universal sticker on it, but they have covered it up with their own value. $5 I paid for this. Worth it. USH. Another keychain. And of course the trading cards. Nine of them in there. And a sticker. No gum, I believe. I can't feel any gum. Probably wouldn't be too edible at the moment. A little decal. Over here is another keychain, which the part that the keys connect to has broken off. Here's a fun one. Price tag still on this unopened VHS from Target. Right there. $17.99. Still sealed in all its glory. Unopened. This document certifies that this one in five scale replica of the hoverboard was created by Quantum Mechanics. Right there. And a little bit of a, a sun glare. But these magazines from overseas as well. 
as cassette tape, anyone? Soundtrack? Yes, Power of Love is on there. There are some really good photos in here. And a little segue, April 19th, 2008 was the first real event I ever went to. And I got to meet Claudia Wells, Jeff Weissman, Bob Gale, and Christopher Lloyd. The first time I ever got my poster that I still own signed. That's when it all began and got to see it on the big screen with a bunch of other folks who enjoy it. When I say began, I mean began getting that poster signed, 1985 is when my enjoyment of said article began. And speaking of posters, I have this tiny one here in this frame that presents all three all adjoin the different, you know, the different outfits and items from the character itself with the little electricity bolts all around Marty there. And then inside here, you don't see this one too terribly often, but I kind of just have it hiding here from part two next to these chairs in storage. And here's the full size rendition that has all the signatures. I'm counting about 18 or 19, might even be 20, somewhere in that rough estimate. I have all the main cast. Yeah, that includes Tom Wilson, Christopher Lloyd, Michael J. Fox, Leah Thompson, Claudia Wells. I even have some that you might not expect on there, like Billy Zane, who was in it for a brief moment or two. Huey Lewis, who provided some of the songs for the soundtrack. Bob Gale. And even Drew Stuzan, who did the artwork on this, this timely classic poster. You know, during the course of this, I've been thinking, how many of these really are still in existence? Is this the only one? Even though there is an assortment of fruit in this blend, gonna go with the pineapple today. Gonna root through here and get the pineapple. Look for a tasty treat. And this is what we're dealing with. I think my refrigerator is getting louder moment by moment. Stand strong, refrigerator. Saved you a seat. And there's plenty for everyone if you promise just to take small nibbles and bites. Unlike what I just displayed. So think about pineapple, you just want to consume it. It just makes you feel good. Kind of like 80s movies. I am an 80s kid. I was born in 74. 1985, I would have been 11 years old. The pinnacle of me embracing everything. That's kind of the age where you are nurtured. on what you're going to become and what you're going to enjoy. It, sound, it sets the groundwork for your interests later in life, that time frame. You're old enough to remember things and to start developing nostalgia. And while I love 80s movies, this one obviously holds a special place. Ooh, I didn't even chew that one that much. I just took it down. Back in those time frame, you would go to the video store. My mom, my dad, my younger sister, and myself, on the weekends, usually on Friday afternoon, we get out of school and parents would get off work. We would go to the local VHS video store and rent movies. We'd rent maybe three or four or five, and you would rent the huge, gargantuan, massive VHS contraption cassette tape holder. Don't even get me started on the rewinder. That was a separate thing. You put it in to rewind. Please be kind. We always rent like five or six movies for the weekend. We watch two on Friday, 
two on Saturday, two on Sunday night, and then return them Monday morning. Repeat the next weekend. And Back to the Future, once a month, was always something that we would rent. Before you could buy it, before we had the money to purchase our own copy, we would rent it from the video store. And you would take the, the video cassette recorder, VCR for short, you'd plug it in the back of the TV, they would give you instructions on how to plug it into the back of the TV, because we did not own one. You had to be very wealthy to own a VCR. Back then you rented them. And we'd go through the arsenal of cassette tapes at the video store. We'd always rent maybe four or five ones that we had not seen. And like I said, every two or three weeks or monthly, we would get that copy. A BTTF part one. This is prior to part two and part three coming out at 89 and 90. And we would watch it continuously. We would have our TV trays and we would eat dinner while we watched the movie. And I came from a conservative Christian home. Nobody cursed, went to church. I went to a Christian school and it was frowned upon dramatically to hear profanity, even in what we rented and what we watched was very carefully critiqued by my parents. But there was a little exception made for this movie because it was just so near and dear to what we enjoyed as a family and what I liked, that they kind of let certain words slide for me as an 11 or 12 year old. They just kind of looked past that because the movie was that good. And I've held on to it all these years. I can't really go into great detail and explain. This chunk here, Getting full of pineapple. Part one is definitely my favorite. There are some continuity errors. There's a few things here and there that are not perfection, but I use perfection, that word, because it really is close to a perfect movie, in my opinion. Part two and three I love in their own separate ways. But if I were to gear you to one particular, if you've never seen them, if there is one that you need to watch as far as the perfect cast, the perfect array of everything, whether it be acting, plot line, special effects, drama, all that entwined in there, comedy. The trilogy is great. The part one, if you have not seen it, You've been living under a rock. And go watch it. That's going to do it for today, if you're new here. And give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know you care. I'll see you in the next video. the vlog.